The Romance of the Rancho. Monterey, 1818. Privateer, Saks Capital of California. Santa Barbara, 1818. Privateers captured at Ortega Rancho. Santa Barbara, 1822. American wins Senorita who saved his life. The Title Insurance and Trust Company of Los Angeles presents The Romance of the Ranchos, a program dramatizing the colorful characters and the historic events in the building of our Southern California. Each week, our wandering vaquero, Frank Graham, returns with another fascinating tale of the Days of the Dawn. The business of the Title Insurance and Trust Company of Los Angeles is to protect owners and investors in real estate against the risks of defective titles. Today, our country, and each of us individually, face far greater risks through the treacherous assaults of the desperate enemies of democracy. America has the resources to crush these threats once and for all. Let us mobilize these resources at once, all of us, by buying more and more United States defense bonds and stamps. Only by such united effort can we win the war. The sooner we do it, the more American lives we can save. And now here's Frank Graham to tell us the story. Buenas noches, senoras y senores. Our story tonight is concerned with a man who many historians credit with being the first American to settle in California and with one of the most romantic incidents in all the history of early California. It's a story which has been colored by many retellings until, in its many versions, it has become almost legendary with the authenticity of many details obscured by time. But the essential facts concerning the life of the young adventurer Joseph Chapman are unquestionably correct, and the colorful and romantic tale is worth the telling, for it is filled with the romance of the ranchos. Joseph Chapman was born in New England. Little else is known about his early life until he shipped before the mast on a New England whaling ship bound around the Horn for China. It was a long, rough voyage before they finally reached port in the Hawaiian Islands, then called the Sandwich Islands. And it was there that, late one night, Chapman talked to a chance acquaintance. But, monsieur, you are young, adventurous, no? <laughs> you will not care too much how it was done if you could earn a nice fat purse. Well, what are you driving at? Uh, come, monsieur, step back here, uh, back farther in the shuttle. Say, listen. Sit down. Uh, monsieur, you do not know whose crew I asked you to join? Well, no, I don't. Monsieur, have you ever heard of Le Capitaine Bouchard? Bouchard? Not the privateersman. Oui, the same. Oh, no, monsieur. I'll have no part in that crew. I'm well satisfied with what I have. Mais, monsieur, surely you would like much gold. Well, I'll get it some other way. Now, you needn't waste any more breath, monsieur. I'm not interested. But wait. Good night, monsieur. Very well, monsieur. Ici, vite, mes marins. Au fort de la Le bateau, le bateau, le bateau. Bien. Good work, monsieur. Oh, he will have no part in a crew like ours, huh? <laughs> Bien, we shall see. On board with him. I'm quick. Quick. And so Joseph Chapman was carried aboard the Argentina, flagship of the much-feared privateer, Hippolyto Bouchard. A few hours later, when he awoke, he was confronted by the master of the ship. Hey, Mr. Chapman, you are awake. What? What hit me? Just a belaying pin, my lad. Just a bump on the head, nothing to worry about. You, you're Bouchard? Oui, I am Bouchard. And you, monsieur, you are my new first mate. First mate? Oui, do not be surprised. I know you. You are an handy man, monsieur. A navigator, a carpenter, a good fighter, perhaps. Hmm? I can use you. Is that so? Well, you've got another guest coming, Bouchard. Oh? <laughs> Take a look over the rail. What? 
Well, we're moving. We're, we're, we're... we're under sail, out of sight of land, headed for the coast of California. It's a long swim, monsieur. Perhaps you will change your mind. Yeah, perhaps I won't. Come, come, you are a man with a sense of humor. You can take a joke, eh? <laughs> you will not hold the little bump on the head against me, eh? Hey, you're quite a character, monsieur. We, oui, I knew you would see reason. You are here now. There's no use in arguing. You have the good sense to take what fortune offers you, eh? Yes, I guess I have, Captain. <laughs> young American, out for adventure and romance, found it in plenty. Here he was, first mate to a privateer who was the terror of the seas. Bouchard sailed under the flag of the recently liberated Republic of Argentina. His object was to help the Californians and their Latin American neighbors gain their independence from Spain. But his reckless manner of winning other people's freedom for them won him only the fear of the Californians. Chapman got his first taste of this when early one morning the privateer hove to off the Presidio of Monterey. Before they could put a boat down, the shore guns sent a volley across their beam. Bouchard, enraged by such fearless reception, put about and landed at Point Pinos. From there, his men marched in to sack Monterey. They swept through the little capital of Alta California, spreading terror before them. Joseph Chapman led his command into a town chapel. And there... Oh, oh monsieur! Voila! Here is much gold, eh? Huh? We shall reap a fortune here. All right, get it and be quick. Oh, look, monsieur! A woman! And a pretty woman hiding from us. Oh! Come here, my pretty! Leave her alone. Get the ornaments and get out. Me, monsieur! Leave her alone, I see. Here, take this gold candle. Tell me, you filthy brute, you tell the dirty creature. Look out, senorita, you'll burn yourself on this you torch. Brute. Trying to burn down the torch. Stop it, I tell you, stop it! Senorita, I warn you, get out of my way. I should hate to have to hurt such a beautiful creature as you. I will you. not get out of your way. You shall have to kill me before you desecrate this altar. I like your spirit, senorita, but you won't stop me from obeying orders. Here. Oh, take your hands off me. Oh. All right, men, grab that stuff and hurry. Senor. <laughs> Senor, my hair. Oh, your hair's on fire. Senorita, here, I'll get it. Just a minute. There. Oh, my hair. You burnt my hair. Well, I warned you about that torch. You should have stayed clear. Oh, just look at him. Yeah, it burned off a chunk of your hair just as clean as if you'd cut it with a knife. I'm sorry, senorita, to mar such beauty as yours, but it'll grow long again. Senor, how can you do such things? You are a beast. Senorita, I, I'm, I'm sorry. Take your hands off me. I hate you. Go away. You have gotten what you want. You have desecrated the house of God and me. Now go. Get out. Senorita, I am truly sorry. Go away. If ever I see you again, I hope it shall be... Shall be dead. <laughs> After sacking the town, Bouchard and his men weighed anchor and continued down the coast, intent upon further looting. But word sped ahead of them. In Los Angeles, Sergeant Antonio Maria Lugo started north post-haste, gathering a company of soldiers as he came. And to the vulnerable Ortega Ranch, north of Santa Barbara, the word came. Papa! Papa! Guadalupe, my child. You are back from Monterey. You are safe. Yes, yeah, Papa, but it was horrible. Guadalupe, you are here. Uh, what is the matter? It was burned by a torch. Ah, by one of those villains? No, I... It was not entirely his fault. I, not I, his fault? If I could only catch the wretch, I would kill him with my own two hands. Oh, Father, forget that now. There is no time to lose. They come this way. They will surely learn to sack our rancho. You must flee. Take everything of value to the Mission Santa Inez. See, si, see, si, you are right. That is all we can do. That and pray that the soldiers will get here in time. <laughs> Sergeant Lugo's detachment arrived just in time. Don Jose Maria Ortega had moved all his valuables to the nearby mission, and the soldiers hid themselves in the bushes on the shore just as Bouchard's ship hove to the outside of the surf. On board... Well, Mr. Chapman, I see no sign of life for the glass. The buildings are deserted, not a leaf stirs. Perhaps it's an abandoned rancho. See, si, abandoned for fear, Bouchard. Look at the well-kept fields, the corrals. They've run away, and not many hours ago... <laughs> this will be easy. We can take our own time to ransack each building. Captain, this will not be like the last time. No, right? monsieur, much easier. No, I mean, it'll not be necessary to burn and destroy. Of course. After we have what we want, burn everything. But, Captain... Quiet, Chapman. Those are my orders. They are not obeyed. I have a way of dealing with mutiny. And not just little bump on the head. Right. Now, you are in charge of the landing party. Over you go. Go away. In toward the surf came the boat bearing Chapman's landing party. 
Waiting in the bushes with the men of Sergeant Antonio Maria Lugo. And then... I'm not going to try to land through that surf, surely. Uh, it looks like it. See? He's bringing it on in. But, senor, that is too large a port. It will swallow. Quiet. It looks like you're going to save us some trouble. There he goes. Yes. Look, look. He's... Uh-huh. He's breaking up. The men will be drunk. Come on, Miss Hombres. Now is the time to catch them. Pronto, surround them. Save your power. They cannot shoot. Use your lassoes. Yeah, rope them. Pull them out of the surf. <laughs> what sport? Like pulling out calves stuck in the mud. See? And look at them. Like brothers. <laughs> there, my hearty up you come. <laughs> pull them in, hombres. Pull them in. We have almost all of them now. <laughs> and without a fight. So well, I'll give you a fight. Look. Oh, me big buffalo. You want to play, huh? Grab him, hombre. Oh, yeah, yeah. Take your hands off of me. <laughs> Take me without a fight. <laughs> Hold him. Hold him still. Ah, there, now. Ah, me buffalo. Now will you hold still? Hey, who tripped me, you slippery ponders? Can't you fight fair? Take this rope off of me. Oh, oh, oh me buffalo. The little lasso, she come in handy, huh? She make even a big buffalo like you lie down nice and quiet. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Ow! Ow! You kick me, senor. Well, never mind. You shall be kicking something else soon. Only not so solid. You'll be kicking the air. Uh, are the ropes ready? See? He see the rest climbing up the tree to fix them now. We'll be ready in a moment. Uh-huh. Now you see, my buffalo. He does not pay to go sailing around the world. Robbing people, burning, killing. Someday, soon or later, you meet somebody just a little bit smarter, and you are finished, swinging at the end of the rope. Well, it has to come sometime. It may as well be now. Oh, but no, senor. <laughs> you are so young, so so handsome, so... Why, you have everything to live for. But I'm not going to. <laughs> no. <laughs> it is too bad. I, I'm sorry, senor. I, I like you. Thank you, senor. <laughs> I've never been hanged by such a gentleman as you. <laughs> Gratis, senor. I should look off. See, see, senor Ortega. Uh, I am glad that I got back in time. I have brought my family back from the mission to see the men who have robbed and plundered, maybe even killed them. You are just in time, senor, for the ropes are ready. And now you shall be able to see your revenge. Ah, yeah. Wait, wait, wait. There is one thing I must do first. Guadalupe, come here. Look. Are any of these men the one who struck you? Oh, but Papa, he did not exactly strike me. Oh, so he is here, eh? Man, which one is it? I did not say he was, Papa. Which one is it, I say? Well, let me get my hand on him. Why not tell him, senorita? You said you wanted to see me dead. But I... Uh... Huh? What is this? Oh, senor. You, you know him? Ah, then oh, this oh. is the one. Not the big buffalo. So you oh. strike my daughter, eh, senor? You burn her hair. Well, I... So, yes. Sergeant, Things too good for him. Now, he shall be tied to a wild bronco and dragged across the trail until he is dead. Papa, no! Let's see. You shall learn, senor, not to harm a woman. Papa, I am shocked at you. That you would do such a thing. It is murder. Worse than anything he has done. But, muchacha. Senorita, he might have killed you. No, no, he did not kill me. And you have no reason to kill him. Sergeant Lugo, I am surprised at you. You are so kind. But, but senorita... No, no, you are brutes, all of you. Guadalupe. Senor, what do you make of this? I do not know. I, I cannot understand. Papa, I stand before him. If you are to kill him, then you will have to kill me, too. For I should never want to live knowing that my father had done such a thing. Guadalupe. Senorita, why are you doing this? Guadalupe, I, I cannot understand you. I, I should not want the blood of any man on the soil of my father. Guadalupe, I do not understand this. But... Well, if that is the way you feel... See, si, see, si, that is the way I feel. Papa, you must not kill them. Very well. Sergeant, you must not kill them. But, senor, what am I to do with them? How should I know? Take them back to Los Angeles. Los Angeles? Oh, but, Papa, I... See, si, what is it? Do you... Do not think perhaps they should be kept here? They might escape. Oh, no, senorita. They shall not escape. I shall see to that. Oh, but you will not harm them, senor. You must promise me oh, that. Oh, senorita, of course not. 
I am most happy not to have to hang them. I do not know what I shall do with them in Los Angeles, but perhaps the governor will tell me. Papa, eh? perhaps, perhaps if you were to give assurance of their safe appearance, they could, uh, that is, some of them could stay and help you with the work here. Guadalupe, I do not know what you are thinking of. Oh. I will have none of them. Oh, see, si, but I will, senorita. That's a very good idea. I myself will go surety for this one. This great uh, buffalo, I like it. Oh, gracias. Si, sí, senor. And what do you think of that, El Senor Buffalo? Can you be trusted? Ah, this is too much. I go. Can you be trusted? Yes, I think you can trust me, senor. You're very kind. And Oh, oh uh, wait, senorita. You too are kind. I don't deserve such treatment from you, but I thank you. I would have done the same for any man, senor. Oh, well, thanks anyway. I, I hope that someday, perhaps, you'll forgive me. Perhaps, someday, I will, senor. Today's war efforts are resulting in necessary curtailments. Priorities and restrictions on sales of certain essential materials along with some other factors which are only psychological, have seriously affected some lines of business. It is important for all of us to remember, however, and to point out to others that the general picture in Southern California is relatively bright. For one basic example, let us compare the volume of real estate transactions in Los Angeles County for December 1941, most of which occurred after the beginning of the war, with those of the same month the year ago. We find that in 1941, the transfers of ownership of real estate actually increased almost 12%. That the number of investments in real estate actually increased over 8%. At the same time, foreclosures on real estate decreased 39%. And we find further, despite alarming and exaggerated eastern newspaper stories about the Pacific Coast, that the large eastern insurance companies are still actively seeking and making loans on Southern California real estate. New people needing homes and new money financing these needs are still pouring into the Southland to the benefit of all of us. So Title Insurance and Trust Company urges you to remember that in most fields, Southern California is still the white spot of the nation, still the land of opportunity, and still the best of all places to work and to live. Back to Los Angeles came Don Antonio Maria Lugo, sergeant in the armies of Spain. And true to his word, he gave Joseph Chapman his liberty, trusting in the young man's honesty. In fact, staking his place in the community on it. And he was not mistaken. For given a chance, Chapman endeared himself to the population. He was put to work supervising the building of the first church of Los Angeles, the old Plaza Church, still standing and in use. And it was on this job that he won the admiration of the priests and earned an unusual nickname. All right, swing that beam across the top. We'll brace it here. Ah, Jose, my son. Oh, finish this, Padre. What brings you here? You ask for another laborer. I bring you this man. One of my best Indians from the mission. Bueno, gracias. What is his name? Pedro. Come, Pedro. Don't hang back. Come here. No, please, Padre. Do not make me work here. Take me back to the mission. But Pedro, what is the matter? Oh. I cannot understand you. Well, this is not such hard work, Pedro. It's not bad at no, all. No, no. I want to go back. But, Pedro, why, why are you acting like this? He looks scared to death. See, si, Pedro, what is it? What are you afraid of? Him. El Diablo. I did not want to work with him. Me? No. El Diablo? Pedro, si. why do you call Senor Chapman such a name? Because he worked with the black art, the magic. When we chop down a tree, he make it fall whichever way he want. He's El Diablo. Oh, see? oh, I see now. See? Why, Pedro, that's just a trick I learned in the woods of New England. No. Anybody can chop down a tree and make it fall the way he wants. You could do it yourself once no. you learned how. No, no, I will not. <laughs> <laughs> Never mind, Jose, I shall talk to him. He will make a good worker. Me, El Diablo. <laughs> that's good. I can hardly blame him, senor, for you have done more work here in a year than we have been able to do in three before you came. Oh. It may not be black magic, but your ingenious ways of doing things have certainly speeded up our work enormously. Well, I'm glad you're satisfied, Padre. Satisfied? Oh, my dear Jose, I don't know what we would do without you. Just this morning, Father Sanchez and I had the rather heated words over you. Over me, Padre? But why? He wanted you down at the mission to help with the grist mill. It is in need of repair. And I would not let him have you. 
for I need you here. Well, now, Padre, I, I hope I don't cause you trouble. Oh, but you do a great deal. Just trying to keep you for my own purpose. <laughs> you may cause a great split in the ranks of the Padres yet. El Señor Diablo. <laughs> <laughs> Joseph Chapman won the affection of the Padres, but he became almost a son to old Don Antonio Maria Lugo. He visited his spiritual godfather often. Ah, senor, my son, what troubles you? You have been sitting out here alone for an hour, staring at the moon. Well, I'm sorry, Don Antonio. I, I've just been dreaming. Ah, dreaming. <laughs> and when a young man dreams, it is usually a, a young lady. <laughs> and it is right you should dream that way, my son. You, uh, you do not dream of the sea, of going off again back home to New England. Oh, no, no, nothing was further from my thoughts. This, this is my home now. Ah, <laughs> my boy, I, I have hoped to hear you say that. That is wonderful. Wonderful. <laughs> the padres and I have talked many times. We, we all want you here to stay. <laughs> you see, we are feared. There's no need to fear my running away, Don Antonio. I'm still your prisoner, remember? And I gave my word. Oh, no, no. I, I did not mean anything like that. That means nothing anymore. I have already asked the governor to grant you a pardon. Wipe out the old score. Really, sir? <laughs> See. I shall be glad for that. <laughs> and you shall have it soon. I should have a reply from the governor any day now. But uh, that is why I was afraid. I was afraid that once you were free, you, you go back. Sail away from here. No, I don't think I'll ever want to leave here again. <laughs> no, you were right the first time. About my dreams. Ah, a senorita. <laughs> that is good. I was hoping that too, my son, for, for you should marry and settle down, raise a family of Californianos. <laughs> oh, whoa. You're getting ahead of me, senor. I haven't even found the girl. Ah, but you were dreaming. See, si. <laughs> I was thinking of a girl I saw just twice. A beautiful girl with her lovely hair burnt. Ah, my son. Senorita Guadalupe, huh? Don Jose Ortega's daughter. See. Si. <laughs> I wonder if she's forgiven me yet. My son, she did not risk her life and save yours for nothing. I wish I could believe that. <laughs> Perhaps. Perhaps you will have a chance to find out soon. Senor, Senor Jose, my son. Where are you, Senor? Ah, Don Antonio Lugo. What brings you to the church? Oh, Padre, I, I'm looking for uh, Senor Chapman. Oh, I'm sorry. He is not here. Not here? Not working? He's gone. Left this morning. Gone? You mean he ran away? Oh, no, Padre. That, that is impossible. He would not do that. He's a good, honest man. <laughs> oh, of course I know. I, I did not mean that, Senor. He did not run away. He was sent away north by the order of the governor. I, too, was sorry to lose him, but... He was needed to build a flower mill for the mission of Santa Inez. Oh, that is battery. What? Santa Inez? Si. Well, that is, that is near the ranch of Don Jose Ortega. See, si, it is very near. Oh, this is wonderful, wonderful. Wonderful. <laughs> si. The governor sends me news that Senor Chapman will soon be pardoned. Oh? Now he is sent to Santa Inez where he will see... Lo oh, 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 this is wonderful, wonderful. <laughs> Senor Chapman? Uh, come in. You sent for me, Padre? Si. I have a job for you. You mean you want me to stop work on the flour mill? Oh, no. Uh, this will take only a few minutes. I understand that you know something of the art of medicine. Well, a little. Bueno. A senorita from a neighboring rancho has suffered a broken arm. She is here now. You will help us fix it, perhaps, no? Well, of course. Where is she? Uh, right this way. Aquí. Come on. Here, my dear, we shall have you well in no time. Senor Chapman, this is... Uh, Senorita. Oh. You... you know each other? Si. Buenos dias, Senorita. Buenos dias, Senor. Well, then you may start, Senor. I shall go get the bandages you will need. Si, gracias. Senorita. Uh, does your arm hurt? Not too much. You are to fix it? See, si, in just a moment. Uh, I've been hoping to see you, senorita. I'm almost glad this happened. Senor, you must enjoy my being hurt. First, my hair. Oh, senorita, 
Haven't you forgiven me yet? Ah, <laughs> see, I have. And I, I have heard much about you, what you have done in Los Angeles. I am glad that, that you were not as bad as my father thought. Oh, that's forgotten now. You see, even your hair has grown out. See, si. nothing remains to recall that day. Nothing but this. Senor, what is it? A little pouch of leather. See, si. that I always keep close to my heart. But, always. But why? Because in it is this. Oh, a strand of hair. See, si. your hair. I've kept it ever since that day. Oh, Senor, you... You kept it. See, si. so that I might always have something to remind me of you. I didn't know then that I might ever meet you again. But I've thought of you a great deal. And I of you, senor. Senorita, you mean, then, you really did save my life because... See, si. because I... <laughs> See, si. even in my anger, that day when you held me so roughly in your arms and burnt my hair, I knew that I could never, never forget you. I never will. Oh, querida mia. You'll never have a chance to, no. One of the many feats of Joseph Chapman was the building of the first wheeled vehicle in California, an ox-drawn carreta, which had two large wooden wheels hand-hewn from native timber brought down from the mountains. For some time, it was the only vehicle in this area, which today leads the nation in per capita ownership of swift modern automobiles. Since that time, Southern California has also become a leader in many other fields, including the volume of real estate transactions. For nearly 50 years, the service of the Title Insurance and Trust Company of Los Angeles in verifying and insuring land titles has been an important factor in making this volume possible. The company has grown to be a national leader, too, in the number of policies of title insurance issued, in the speed and completeness of its service, and in the efficiency by which it is able to render this service at minimum cost to its customers. Now, Frank, what's the story for next week? Next week, we'll take you to the great rancho which once stood on the present site of Azusa, and tell you the story of a town that was raffled off. It's a tale you're going to enjoy, I know. And so until then, this is your wandering vaquero, Frank Graham, saying, Hasta la vista, señoras y señores. The Romance of the Ranchos, a presentation of the Title Insurance and Trust Company of Los Angeles, featuring Frank Graham as the wandering vaquero, is dramatized by John Dunkel and produced by Ted Bliss, with special music arranged by Irwin Yo. Bob Lamond speaking. This is the Columbia Broadcasting System.